Hello and welcome back to Anderson Podcast Series, Everything Tax. And today we are here with very important topic that is the financial free zones within the UAE. So today uh, to talk about this particular topic with me is uh, Terry. Terry is a senior legal counsel at Anderson UAE. So welcome Terry. And Terry, the first question that I want to ask and all our viewers wanted to understand about what are the financial free zones within the UAE and how they operate, what the legal structure look like about them. Um, thank you again, Anurag. I'm happy to be here and share our insights on uh, business setup in the UAE, especially for financial free zones. Um, financial free zones are basically two in the UAE, the ones that are very dominant. I'll give you a brief history of the two, and I'll start with the one which is much older, which is Dubai International Financial Center. Most of you have heard it called DIFC. Mm -hmm. DIFC was set up in the year 2003, arising out of a federal decree. And uh, it's basically what you have is an island, you know, in, in an ocean. The ocean would be the mainland. The island is a financial free zone. It has its separate laws. It has its own courts and uh, operates differently from uh, other parts of the mainland. DIFC largely is for banks, uh, trust funds, foundations, family offices, and things like that and is located in Dubai, in the Emirate of Dubai. Uh, Abu Dhabi Global Markets, on the other hand, is uh, ADGM and is located in Abu Dhabi. Um, it's very similar to DIFC, very, very similar, financial free zone also, and uh, the laws are separate. It has its own courts, it has its own uh, uh, registry, it has its own, follows common law, and it's also uh, typically similar to DIFC. A oh, very, very interesting fact about the financial free zone. And while we'll be talking about financial free zones, these free zones essentially run a lot of incubation centers as well. So a lot of startups from around the world are making their houses back in either ADGM or DIFC. And, and they're finding it much more easier. I mean, the common thing that I heard whenever we talk to any startup and coming out to UAE is that these two financial free zones offers them a legitimate trust because they're governed differently. So Terry, mm -hmm. just help our viewer understand what kind of these regulations are, how they are different, what kind of structures these financial free zones offer to the, uh, to the businesses. Um, so the, the, the financial free zones have a lot of structures. They have really, really advanced in terms of company structures. You will find limited liability partnerships, you'll find, uh, or general partnerships, you'll find uh, limited liability companies, and a very interesting um, company structure called uh, protected cell companies, where you have uh, different cells arising out of one company, and the liabilities and assets of each cell are protected from the other, which is very novel, you know, because typically a company, you will not find assets of one cell or a business division being different from the other assets of another business decision, uh, division. So, DIFC and ADGM have both a protected cell company, and this is really novel. Um, so th those are the different company structures. The DIFC and ADGM have separate courts that follow common law. They have their own uh, different levels of, of uh, litigation. You can opt as a non-DIFC entity to be governed by DIFC courts or ADGM courts and their laws. The other thing is that they have uh, very well-structured systems. They have, over the years, developed big systems because you find their infrastructure, first of all, is very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they are based on English common law and other systems that have been there, many people prefer them because there's predictability. You will find your lit if you choose to go for litigation or your disputes are settled very fast, their application systems and compliance are all online. You find yourself, uh, you don't have to do so much. So, so they have made it very easy. So that, that, that brings out a point that, you know, if somebody is, you know, um, based out of UAE, right, and they want to establish an entity out there, many times the requirement is that as to whether they need to travel physically to operate and open a company and incorporate an entity within the UAE, or there are systems, there are ways, or there are methods and processes out there which can enable a person who's based outside UAE to incorporate within the uh, DIFC or ADGM is a system of virtual uh, application possible? Yes, it is very possible. The, 
they've made it very easy for someone who's out of the country. The only part that they require you to be present is when you're applying for a visa, when you're doing your medicals. Otherwise, you will get your license without necessarily being in the UAE. All right, so all the verification can be done online, you mean to say that? Everything can be done online, certification can be done online. You do a Zoom call and then they verify the passport vis-a-vis -vis the human being on a video call. And sub, uh, submission of all the documentation is done online, email, and, and they've made it very easy for anyone from anywhere in the world to set up. Oh, that's very interesting. So yeah. you, you touched with a very important point about the compliances within these financial free zones. So, so are these compliances very robust sort of compliances? Are these very complicated compliances? Or these are systematic, system-driven, uh, well-informed uh, you know, compliances? And what kind of those compliances are there, if you can touch with a little bit on that? Yeah, so because they are financial free zones and they have been, you know, the institutions have been there for a while. They are run by very experienced people and they are based on systems that have been there for so many years. You will find that the compliance is very robust. By robust, you would find that these are based on international standards. So a person who's from the UK or from the Cayman Islands or from the British Virgin Islands or from the US will not find it strange that uh, there are these compliances because this is what people have been uh, used to in those jurisdictions. So the typical compliances include, of course, uh, FATCA and CRS, which we have discussed in a previous episode. Um, you will have, of course, annual renewals of uh, data protection. And data pro both of them have very robust laws on data protection. Um, you'll have to renew your licenses, like I said. The license renewal process includes, uh, of course, confirmation of the directors, the shareholders. These happen on a yearly basis. The other compliances that are very common is uh, anti-money laundering because these two jurisdictions have their separate laws on AML and they are robust. So they make sure that your AML uh, regulations and your policies within the company are good. The other compliance is on employment. They have, each of them have very clear and uh, well-written employment laws. So you'll find that, you know, the compliance on that end is also very good. Very important point. And then I, I think, uh, you know, a uh, very important point for a global part of the world, essentially, if you see that a U.S., uh, you know, European jurisdiction and Asian countries out there, um, you know, the authorities within these countries prefer transparency, right? So is there any mechanism of, you know, making the entities transparent by, you know, pro providing the insights to as to whether who are the shareholders of the company or the directors of the company? Are these information accessible online by the people incorporated, uh, you know, businesses within the within these financial free zones? Yeah, you touch a very important point. Uh, in the modern world, especially with the sharing of information across the world and, of course, in the digital era, uh, being able to see um, what is happening in other jurisdiction is important. Now, because everything is online, you could actually check from wherever you are in the world, even if you are in Australia or any part of Africa, any part of you know South America, you could just go on the DIFC website or the ADGM website and check the existence of an entity uh, comp by company name or a license name, I mean license number, and then you could also check the shareholders, uh, of course, they have um, some entities within this structure choose to have their information to be, of course, uh, a certain level of, of protection for some of, because you don't, there, some of the information cannot be out that much. So for some protected cell companies, you'll find that information is not exactly readily available without the consent of the shareholders. But most of the uh, companies that exist within all the structures, you can find that information online, the shareholders, the directors, and sometimes the uh, ultimate beneficiary owners. Good. And that's, that touch is very important aspect as well when we talk about different sort of, you know, legal structures that is possible. Often comes to a point when if we talk about startup entities, we talk about, uh, you know, the entity which looking for the funding round, which looking for incubation centers out there. Now, these entities predominantly may have a different sort of shareholding structures, not just only the equity shares. Maybe they have preferential shares. They may have a different class of the shares with different sort of rights. So is that something possible within these financial free zones? Absolutely right. So you because they are trying to attract all kinds of capital, right? And also all kinds of talent. And, and that's a very key 
key thing for a financial free zone and an economy that is progressive like the UAE. So you can have uh, in these spaces, uh, ADGM and uh, DIFC, the different uh, share structures are available. You could have preferential shares, you could have ordinary shares and much more. So it's acceptable. It's acceptable. Yes. And and people can define different sort of class of the shares with rights and they can modify as well as these rights as well. You're very right. Yes. All right. And nominee structure is also possible, I believe, right? Yes. So you can have nominalization of the shares and essentially uh, those are exe executable, right? Yeah, so for some, uh, there's an extent to which some nominal structures are acceptable mm -hmm. and there are some which are not acceptable, but largely uh, you'll find that some are acceptable. All right. Mm -hmm. So so you, you talked about, uh, you know, incorporation process, you talk about compliances, you talk about different legal structures, the share, share classes out there. Um, I want to ask a question for our viewers. What makes the financial free zone a choice of destination for the businesses that look out, um, you know, for incorporation within the UAE and expendability out there? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the tax part, which I'll touch base gradually, yeah. but then besides the tax, what are other areas out there? I mean, so you'll find uh, a very... What is happening is that the UAE is part of a new global frontier. So with that, and, 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 and that's where people are looking at. These are the new areas of investment. So the UAE has been able to put up world-class infrastructure, including airport and connectivity. You could connect to the UAE within six hours uh, from Europe, uh, Asia, Africa, anywhere. So that is very key. Number two is the availability of stability. The, the, the economy is stable. The security is very stable. And uh, this is something that has happened within the region. You'll find that stability for investment is very key. And I think I think I also continue to see the number of you know uh, notifications coming from uh, financial free zones with respect to the number of networking events that they organize, uh, number of you know initiatives to support the business, such as like you know having a having a round of discussions, the table round of discussions, promoting the businesses, giving them opportunities to talk about their businesses. Uh, educate the entire fraternity within the financial free zones that a new business is set up, this kind mm -hmm. of services that they offer. And besides that, they also give opportunities to incubate, yes. uh, you know, to provide a platform so that they can they can expand, they can share that idea with a wider audience around the world. And I believe an uh, important aspect to consider here is that, you know, the entities which established out of ADGM and DIFCs are uh, reputable organizations and they seen as well compliant because compliance is a key for any investor or any sort of you know a big uh, fund house to look into uh, these aspects and once an organization is compliant raising the capital raising the funds and operating out of you know free zone becomes very essential because these both places um, I think based out of very central location within the within the UAE, yes. Dubai as well as Abu Dhabi. Yes, and there are a lot of global businesses are there. So, you know, uh, you know, finding from a real estate perspective, finding it from a leisure perspective, these are one of the very prominent destinations to look within the UAE as such. Other aspect I want to touch base with our viewers that um, you know uh, these financial free zones offer the foundations. The foundations are basically the structure whereby you can. You can create a corporate structure without a share capital, right? Yes. And this family foundations allows you a lot of tax incentives because you know the 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 the, the contributors of these funds can elect to choose it being a transparent entity or being a body corporate, and then the certain type of tax treatment can be availed, and certain tax exemption can also be availed out there. Um, so I think I think that brings out another critical point that a mm. lot of viewers want to understand is that what is the cost of operation um, within these financial free zones? The cost is quite minimal. Um, if you look at the international standards generally, the cost is quite minimal. And it is largely based on the economics of the place, the, the, the diversity of the place, the idea to bring in as many people as they can from all parts of the world. So the cost is quite minimal. You will you, you're able to set up an entity for as low as maybe two thousand uh, dollars, and depending on the class, if it's if it's a regulated financial institution, up to seventy million dollars, uh, and also on the lower side, up to two thousand dollars. And you're able to set up depending on your activity. Uh, if you're a startup, it's also very very low. In fact, for startups, there's a startup hub which is there to welcome younger people who are very innovative and, and, and it's very less costly. I think that's, uh, that, that's, that brings these uh, financial free zone 
quite inclusive. So very, you, you very see like, you know, a lot of banks, a lot of insurance companies, funds, houses, family owned businesses, headquarter businesses, uh, consulting businesses. Yes. Right. And a and lot of governance driven things, trust operate, foundations operate in these yes. financial prisons. I think it, it makes a preferred choice for those who are looking at stability. We're looking at, you know, expandability out there who's looking for a, a right governance. I think the financial free zones are the right choice for them. Yes, they are quite robust. They have been tested. They have their separate courts. If you have a dispute, you're able to settle it within a very short period of time. The laws are very certain. The compliance is very robust. Setting up is very easy and it's online. So I think the financial free zones are a place to look at and first place to look at, in fact. Absolutely. So viewers, uh, we understand that, you know, financial free zone, which is DIFC and ADGMs are, are the place to look at. And definitely it can provide the wings to your organization, expandability and growth within the UAE. Should you have further more questions, we are happy to answer those questions and stay tuned for more podcasts on different topics and different scenarios covering tax, incorporation, legal and many more. Thank you so much for viewing us. Mm-hmm.